so in this video we will understand about the sampling theory and its limitations firstly we will see the definition of the sample and sample size firstly see sample a finite subset of the population selected from it with the objective of investigating its properties that means properties of the population is called a sample that means suppose we have this population and we want to investigate its properties now instead of investigating all this population we will choose a subset from this population which is called sample and we will investigate properties of this sample and that properties must be similar to the properties of this population so that's why we use sample and this is called sample now let's see what is sample size of course the number of units in the sample is known as the sample size now let's see some main objectives of the sampling theory that is for which purposes we use sample theory now let's see first purpose that is to obtain the optimum result optimum means as best as possible that is a maximum information about the characteristics of the population with the available sources at our disposal in terms of time money and manpower by studying the sample values only that means basically we want to get optimum characteristics of this population with the available time money and manpower but it will be very difficult to investigate through all this population with only these available sources so basically we can get optimum results with these available sources by investigating through only these sample values so that's why we use sampling theory here the second point is to obtain the best possible estimates of the population parameters so of course here we are getting results about the characteristic of this sample these results of the characteristics of this sample must be estimate for the characteristics of this population so we will try to get as possible best estimates for the population parameters now we can understand this sampling theory by using these two examples here now see if a customer wants to buy some grapes from the salesman then these grapes are the population now he wants to know its characteristics that is characteristic of this whole population now that means the taste of these grapes he wants to know the taste of these whole grapes now for this he will not taste all the grapes of the salesman that means he will not investigate the characteristic of these whole grapes he will just only took a small sample and will investigate through this sample and will know the characteristic of this sample which must be similar to this whole population that means he will get two to three grapes from this whole grapes and will taste these two to three grapes and will see that whether the taste of these grapes are okay or not then he will come to know about the taste of this whole grapes and will buy grapes from the salesman similarly if a housewife cook some in the kitchen and she want to know its characteristics that means whether the salt or chili is okay in the cooked product or not then she will not taste all the cooked product she will take a spoonful of that cooked product and will taste that spoon and from this she will come to know whether the salt and chili is okay in whole of this cooked product or not now let's see limitations of the sample surveys we know that we conduct sample surveys over the complete enumeration that means over the complete study of the population only if these three conditions are satisfied if these three conditions are satisfied then we can say that our sample survey is useful over the complete enumeration so the first is the sample is drawn in a scientific manner 
what does it mean so the sample is drawn in scientific manner it means that in the sample survey firstly we must use a qualified skilled and experienced personal personal that means who investigate hold the sample survey and he must do all his work under better supervision and must use sophisticated that means suitable equipments and suitable statistical techniques for the planning and execution of the sample survey and after these plannings he must collect the sample data then process the sample data and then analyze the sample data in the absence of all of these the results of the survey might not be reliable similarly here we have the second condition that is the appropriate sampling design is used now if the sample survey is not properly designed or not properly executed then the results obtained will not be reliable we can define it with the words of the frederick f stephan he says that samples are just like medicines we know that if we take medicines carelessly or without the knowledge of their effects then the result of the medicines might be harmful in the similar way if we take our sample not properly designed and not executed carefully then the results of the sample survey might also be harmful for us that means the results obtained from the sample survey might not be reliable for us now here the third and the last condition is that the sample size is adequate adequate means suitable that means the size of our sample must be suitable and now suppose if the sample size is not suitable that means it is of large proportion of the population size then of course we will need more time more money and more labor then there might be no benefit of using sample survey over the complete census that means over the complete study of the population right and the last limitation is if we want to obtain information about each and every unit of the population then we can't work on the sample only we have to work on the whole population and moreover if the population is too heterogeneous then it is impossible to use a sampling procedure so we study here four limitations of the sampling theory that is first limitation is because of the reason if the sample is not drawn in a scientific manner and the second limitation was because if not suitable sampling design is used and the third limitation is because of not suitable size of sample is used and the fourth limitation is of course because of the reason if we want to get information about each and every unit of population or whether our population is too much heterogeneous so these were the four important limitations of the sampling theory earlier these limitations we have studied that what is sampling theory by using these two easier examples and what are the main objectives of the sampling theory